What's up everybody? It is I, Tony, and welcome back to TT Burger Game Reviews, and this is part 2 of my Dead or Alive series review, and those of you who missed what happened in part 1, here's a quick little TT Burger recap for you all. In part 1 I took a look at the game Dead or Alive, the original PlayStation version of the original Dead or Alive, and gave it a 7.5 out of 10, because it was a good game, it just was light on content due to not having that many modes in the game, but for the most part it's a good game, and those of you who are fans of, of the Dead or Alive series and want to see how it all began, definitely check the game out. But now we're going to zoom ahead to the 6th generation of gaming, which is the days of the PlayStation 2 and stuff. We're going to be looking at Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore. This game was also known as Dead or Alive 2 and on the Sega Dreamcast, and then, then, then Dead or Alive Ultimate 2 on the Xbox, at least for the Dead or Alive Life Ultimate Collection. Now, Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore is definitely a huge improvement over the first game. You have more modes, more characters, better graphics and stuff, and more replay play value to this makes this game a very true superb sequel to the Dead or Alive series, especially to the first game. And since this was the first and only Dead or Alive game released on the PS2, this was, was, was the way to go for, for PS2 fans who did not own any Dead or Alive games and stuff like that at the time. And for fighting game fans as well. Now for the story here, getting into the story, there really isn't much to say about the story, it's kind of confusing, I never didn't really follow the story much, but the story basically talks about how the second Dead or Alive tournament has begun and the evil Tengu appeared, and the fighters fa face to, to defeat him and stuff and win the tournament and stuff, that's basically what it is, it's basically one of those, those simple, those, those, those simple beat the bad guy at the end of the tournament type for fighting game stories and stuff, and I didn't really, really care to follow or care for the story that much because I cared more for the gameplay and everything like that because we don't we don't play fighting games for the stories is what, is what I mean. But I pretty much grabbed on about the story long enough. Let's get let's get let's continue here. Now in this review I'll be playing as four different characters, Kasumi, Tina Armstrong, Ayana, and Helena Douglas. And I like playing as the girls more in the Dead or Alive Life series, that's just me, so I'm to just point that out there. But as we get into the game here we notice that the game's graphics look great. I mean like they're not as good looking as like graphics and like Tekken Tag, Tech tech Tournament and stuff like that, but for the most part, part the graphics look nice, I mean the character models, models look great, the facial animations look nice in the characters, and you can see their hair moving and stuff, and like, there are some clipping animation problems here and there, but since this game was, was, was released in like the 2000s, that was like a launch title for the PS2, it's forgiving. There are a couple slowdowns down, down, down here and there, which is kind of an annoyance, but like, there's not that many slowdowns, but I'm gonna take some points off, off for that and stuff, but for the most part, the game looks great. I'm not sure what it looks like on the, the Dreamcast, I never played it, but I did but I did play the Xbox version of Dead Alive Ultimate 2, and I, I know the graphics have improved in that, but that game came out in like late 2004 and stuff, so of course the graphics won't look better because it was it was later in the 6th gen, gen, generation of gaming, so the graphics didn't look better on that, but I like the layout better for the PS2 controller when it comes to the control, so I'm, I like the PS2 version better, but that's just me. Now for sound, the sound is definitely one of my favorite parts of this game, I mean like, the music is awesome, I love the music in this game, especially um, well I didn't have a favorite track, but I like all the music and stuff, so that's just saying, but like, I like like the music, and I do have a, a, a complaint here, and that is in the voice acting. Now, in this game we have the English voice acting and the Japanese voice acting, but Japanese voice acting is awesome, I love the Japanese voice acting. But the English voice acting sounds awful and very, very phoned in at the last minute. I mean, the voice acting in the English, the voice actors sound so bored that they might as well that sound like they'd rather be somewhere else. And just, it would have been been better to not have the English voice acting just kept in Japanese like I did with the first game. But thankfully, they give you the option to use the Japanese voice acting, so it's all good. But just that I wish they didn't have the English voice acting in here because it just seemed like a waste of time. Because it, it would have been better without it, in my opinion. But that's just me, though. But now let's get into the gameplay, and the gameplay has improved over the first game. There are more modes modes to play in this time, more characters, and while there may not be a lot of costumes to unlock when you beat the game, I, should, I didn't mention that in the first game, that when you, you beat the game with certain characters, you unlock their costumes. Now, while they have less costumes here than they did in the original game for the PlayStation, it's not a problem because you have more modes in the end. Like, we have we have story battle and time attack, and we have tag battle stuff like that. A lot more more modes in it in it this time, and it definitely shows that that they improved here, and they wanted they wanted they, they, they to improve here, and they definitely improved here. Now the, the game now the game before you look at here is from the story mode and stuff, and because like that was the main mode that I like unlock everything, but. I did play the other modes as well, like time attack and such, and tag battle, and then tag battle was just like a lot of fun because like I like tech and tech tournament, and I like tag battle battle in this one as well. The opponent AI is is, is is definitely a lot more balanced here too. There are times where they can become a, a little bit cheap at the end and stuff, but like the opponent AI is definitely more balanced than they were 
in the first game, man. A lot of improvements here, and the controls are more fluid here as well. I mean, like, um, I like I didn't mention mention the controls, but like, the controls felt a little bit bit weighted compared to this one. But like, the controls are definitely smoother here, is what I'm trying to say. They definitely improved here a lot, and you know, Tekken should be proud of themselves because this is definitely one of the best Star Live games ever made, and it was the only one on the PS2, so this was the way to go. And I'm glad they 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 it turned out the way it did. And aside from that, though, there really isn't much else to say. I mean, like, um, it, 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 it's fucking awesome. It's an awesome sequel. Fucking amazing, whatever you want to call it. And it definitely is well worthy of a great Dead or Alive game. So, what's my, what's my final verdict here? Well, Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore is definitely a fucking awesome sequel. Fucking amazing. An awesome fighting game for the PlayStation 2. I will be taking some points off here because of the, the English voice acting not being good and some of the frame rate rate, rate hitches and stuff like that, but... For the most part, it's a fantastic sequel that, that improved over its predecessor. I will be giving the game a 9 out of 10, because it's definitely the perfect score to give it. I mean, I could have given it given it a perfect 10 if it didn't have those, those small problems, but for the most part, the game is fucking awesome, fucking amazing. And that's it for part 2. For the final part here, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna go right into the PlayStation 4 era of the, <laughs> the Dare Life series. We're gonna be looking at Dead Alive 5 Last Round. And I know there's original Dead or Alive 5 and Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate on the PlayStation 3 and stuff like that. But this is the only version I have because I did own those those games back then. But like when I heard this one came out and had more stuff in it, I sold them and got this one. And we're going to be looking at, at this one in, in the final part. That's pretty much all I got to say. This is Tony. Peace and out. And see you all in part 3 of my Dead or Alive series review. Take care everyone.